Hi, this is Chuyu from ProDrones. So along with the recent launch of the M30, uh, a new payload for the M300 series called the H20N was launched at the same time. Um, so what this is, is a new payload for the M300 series which is specialized for nighttime operations. So just let's just take a quick look at what it's like. There is a new fourth camera which is a uh, wide angle thermal camera. The previous thermal camera now has an eight times optical zoom uh, built in already. You also have your same uh, wide angle camera and the zoom camera, but these two have, have some trade offs done. So the resolutions of these camera is, uh, these cameras are reduced, uh, but they are a lot more sensitive to light making them uh, better night cameras. Uh, you still maintain the laser range finder with the 1.2 kilometer uh, detection range and the gimbal with the memory card at the back. So you have uh, still the same starlight sensors. Um, these uh, sensors are designed to work on at night with very low uh, on in very low light and they have reworked autofocus and object detection uh, algorithms uh, we'll see what it actually performs like uh, later it also has the same ip44 rating and a re decently wide uh, operating range in terms of temperature so the thermal Although it is a thermal camera, but uh, it won't be as precise as the one on the H20T, right? Uh, there are two cameras now. One has a two times optical zoom built in. The other one has an eight times optical zoom uh, already fixed in the camera. And uh, both are 640 by 512. So what is gonna happen is as you move from the two times zoom to 32 times, it will move in between the optical and digital zooms to have a more, almost a seamless zoom. All the other features like your isotherms, color palettes, uh, temperature area measurement, spot temperature measurement, alarms, they're also available. Uh, and the two cameras will work uh, seamlessly between each other. You also have uh, the modes like uh, side by side. So this way you can uh, zoom in and out of the cameras and see what's going on at the same time. So the reason why the side-by-side -side, uh, matters is uh, thermal cameras lose context. For example, uh, if you had letters on a signboard um, or any kind of uh, painted font on a signboard, the font will not appear in the thermal image because it has the same temperature as the board itself. So uh, having a RGB image gives what you see on the thermal image context. So here we have um, images uh, side by side. Uh, on the left, we have the image from the H20T and on the right from the H20N. So uh, at wide angle, uh, there's probably nothing much to compare. Um, th they are quite adept at this uh, range. But uh, you would probably notice that uh, the H20T has the four by three uh, image ratio, whereas the H20N is a 16 by nine ratio image. So we zoom in a little bit. And uh, the first thing to note is that the zoom on the H20N is less. It only goes up to one to eight times, 
uh, which is definitely less than the 200 times of the H20T. Um, so the stepping uh, of the H20N is a little bit slower. Uh, I'm going to increase that a little bit more. Now at this range, you can see the images are pretty okay. Um, if we zoom in for the image on the left, and the one on the right, you can see they are pretty much even. And uh, the algorithms, which does the light brightening of the shadows, uh, starts to kick in. You can see the shadows on the right are pretty faint. On the left, it's pretty dark. Right behind the top of the blocks. Okay. As we zoom in even more, you can start to see uh, some purple fringing on the H20T camera, but you still have very good uh, detail compared to the H20N. What you see on the H20N is a lot of graining. So we're roughly at about the same time to zoom. As we go in, you can see the images on the H20T are still sharp. The wire is still pretty sharp, right? Compared to the H20N. There's some purple fringing, but uh, in the case of inspection, it's fine. Uh, but uh, the, the most important thing is that the details are sharper on the H20T. So this is the, where the trade-off of the H20N versus the H20T is. Uh, in daylight, it's not as good. Um, but once you see for the, the way it handles it at night, then um, you probably understand why it's a lot better at night. Okay, so um, this is the back alley of our office. And as you can see, um, as dramatic as the video is on the right, which is the H20T video, the H20N actually gives a lot more details. So you can see the plants, you can see the alleyway itself, and if we go further, the um, digital signal processing causing this fuzzy pattern to come up when you're moving. You can actually see things, things in the alleyway, whereas on the right it's just pitch black. And this is uh, limited due to the dynamic range situation with the camera. Oh, as you can see, okay, so the H20T is caught up. So you can see the, on the image on the left, there's a lot more detail. Uh, you can see the actual uh, area surrounding the uh, fountain. Um, it's a bit washed out, but uh, it does serve the purpose for showing how much detail you can actually get. Now this is another good example. Um, you can see part of the rooftop area. The air conditioning units are actually visible. Whereas on the right, it's just totally pitch black. So, um, you can't see anything on the right, but basically uh, we're looking, doing a panning shot uh, of an area, which is basically just trees. You can see in, on the left, there's no thermal signature. And on the right, the H20T just picks up nothing at all. But if you look at uh, the starlight camera from the H20N, we can still see the trees in the area. Right? Right. You can still see some trees. You can still see uh, some details in the area. Whereas uh, the H20T gave up long ago.
Now another thing to compare is actually the thermal camera. So for the thermal camera, uh, there is already some zoom on the uh, unit on the left. So from the wide angle, we already have a 2x IR zoom. It is actually almost comparable to the one on the right, which is uh, at one time. Right? Now at wide angle, you can see it's pretty much uh, even. But let's just zoom in a little bit more um, with the H20N and we can actually compare. So this is the H... Uh, now this is the H20N and the H20T looking at the same spot, both with 8 times zoom. So because there is a physical optical zoom for the second thermal camera on the H20N, the image is still very sharp, whereas you can see on the H20T, it's already blur. Now this blurring has a few uh, small side effects. The first thing is, uh, the blurring causes some kind of averaging on the heat targets in the area. So what you see is uh, the peak temperature is actually lower due to the averaging uh, algorithm. Of course, if we go zoom in any further, um, you still retain detail on H20N. For example, on the left, you can see it's already 32 times zoom. No, uh, there you can see everything. See? See, it's so blur. Especially. See, it's so blur. And you still get very good detail, whereas on the H20T, it only goes up to 8x. We did a little experiment in our store. Uh, it's the only place where we can get it to be pitch black. Now the image you see on the left is a thermal image and it's pretty typical what you see of a thermal image. We have a cup of hot water sitting on a box and a padlock that's sitting on the box as well. And basically you can see the outlines of the hot cup of water and the box and anything else that is warm in the room, like the lights above, which we have already switched off. Now, uh, on, the, on the right, you'll see this image is actually in uh, the store with a little bit of light leaking in from outside here and there. But basically what you see is, this is the Starlight wide angle camera. It's noisy, it's grainy, but uh, you, you get the gist of it, it's basically a room with everything off. And um, this is the image with the starlight sensor off. And what happens is you can see, um, you, can't, you can barely see the cup, you can see a bit of the padlock and the box. And above the, between the two, you will see a bright uh, neon-like uh, purple color thing. That is actually the laser from the laser range finder. This is with starlight mode on, and basically you can see everything clearly now. You can see the cup and the picture of the M300 RTK on the box. So when I mentioned that um, th you lose context in thermal images, this is what I meant. Um, in a thermal image, a box is just a box because the picture on the box and the box has the same temperature. And why it's important to have uh, sensors like the starlight sensor is that uh, you get up details like the one you see on the right and this gives you a better context uh, with what you're seeing. Um, signs, um, features on a person's face. These are all things you will see differently with the starlight sensor compared with a the thermal camera. On the right, you, uh, now you see a side-by-side -side image. Uh, on the left, you have the thermal image, which is the heat signature of the cup and the padlock a little bit on the right. On the right is the starlight sensor image. Uh, you have all the details, including that very bright laser from the laser range finder. Thank you.